friends, my name is Brittany and I want to welcome you to Sabbath School. Don't you just love it that we can get together every Sabbath? On this very special day, we get to come together and thank God for being so very good to us and we get to spend time with Him and our loved ones. It is time for our family prayer. I wonder who will have pray for us today. Let's see. Hi, this is Rachel Huddleston and Maddie Huddleston, and we want to welcome you to Sabbath School. And to start off, we would like to have prayer. So if you'd like to bow your heads with me, um, we will begin. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Sabbath day. Thank you for rest. Thank you for these families. Thank you for the children that want to participate in Sabbath School. I pray that each of us will get a blessing. Thank you again for your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer. Boys and girls, isn't it great that we can pray to our forever friend Jesus whenever we want? I just love that we don't have to pick up the phone to make a call for Jesus. He is always available to hear our prayers. Now it's time for our opening song. Are you ready to sing? Tune your singing voices. Hello, this is the Brooks family and we're going to be singing Good Morning, It's Sabbath. Did you know that Sabbath is a very important day to God? Today, the title of our mission story is The Power of One Baptism. Boys and girls, let's watch and see what we learn from this very important mission story. As a little girl, Yana knew she wanted to be baptized one day. At 13, she remembered her wish, I'm going to be baptized she said. So Yana started taking a six-month baptismal class at the Russian-speaking Seventh-day Adventist church that her family attended in Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic. She excitedly told others about her plans to give her heart to Jesus. Olga, her 21-year-old adopted sister in Ukraine, heard the news and announced, I want to be baptized too! Olga began taking baptismal classes in Ukraine and made plans to travel to Prague to be baptized with Yana. Yana was thrilled that Olga wanted to be baptized. Now one baptism would become two. As the day of the baptism drew near, Yana invited relatives and friends to come watch at the church. She also invited her 17 classmates from the only Adventist school in Prague. I'm very excited about being baptized, Yana said. This is a big celebration and I would be happy if you came. The school principal marveled at Yana's excitement as she spoke with her classmates many of whom belonged to other Christian denominations or didn't go to church at all. Yana's face was shining with joy. Finally, the big day arrived. Relatives and friends packed the church. Yana was so happy. When she came out of the water, she knew her dream had come true. The pastor asked if anyone wanted to be baptized next time. Yana's younger sister, Esther, immediately leapt to her feet and ran to the front of the church. Two teenage girls joined her. Yana was thrilled. Now one baptism would become five baptisms. Several of Yana's classmates accepted her invitation to attend the baptism. After a little while, three of those classmates, two girls and one boy, decided that they also wanted to be baptized. Yana was thrilled. Now one baptism would become eight. But that wasn't the end. Yana has an older sister named Diana, who is 21 and a university student in Ukraine. Diana traveled to Prague to watch Yana's baptism. Afterward, she said, you know, I also want to be baptized. A month later, Diana was baptized in Ukraine. What is the power of one baptism? 
The Holy Spirit used Yana's decision to be baptized to touch the hearts of eight other people. One baptism became nine baptisms. After I was baptized, other people also wanted to be baptized, Yana said. Praise God! At this time, we're going to be singing number 12, Praise Him, Praise Him. Hello everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Bitter Waters Made Sweet. The memory verse is Psalm 138, verse 1. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. The message for today's story is we worship God with joyful praise. The Jones family was on a hike in an unknown woods. They walked for a long time. Soon they knew that they were lost. Their water bottles were empty, and they were very hot and thirsty. Let's stop here, said Mother, and ask God to help us. After praying together, they began walking again. Before long, they found the right trail, and soon they were back at their campsite. At their campsite that night, they worshipped God with joyful praise. Then Mother told the story about a time when the Israelites had water problems too. The joyful celebration on the banks of the Red Sea was over. The pillar of cloud began to move again. The Israelites knew it was time to move on. So they followed the cloud into the desert. For three days, they traveled without finding water. The water they had brought with them was gone. They had to find more if they were to stay alive. The cloud led them toward Mara, where they expected to find a spring. Moses herded sheep in the wilderness for forty years. He knew the place well. He knew the water at Mara was bitter and not fit to drink. But the Lord had led them to this place. Just as Moses expected, at the first sight of the water, the joyful cry went up, Water! Water! Men, women, and children rushed to the spring, but as soon as the first of them tasted it, their joy turned to disappointment. It had been just three days since the Lord had worked a miracle at the Red Sea. Just three days since he had destroyed the entire Egyptian army. It had only been a few days since they had left Egypt and their lives of slavery. God himself in the pillar of cloud had led them to Mara. But they forgot all of that. What are we going to drink? They grumbled to Moses. Moses did what the Israelites did not do. He turned to the Lord for help. 
the Lord showed Moses a piece of wood and told him to throw it into the water. Moses did, and the water became sweet. And then imagine how the people rushed forward to the water. They had gone from joy at finding water to disappointment after tasting it. Now they were back at joy after God worked the miracle. They were no longer in danger of dying of thirst. They had been saved. And then God gave them a promise through Moses. Listen carefully to the voice of the Lord and do what is right in His eyes. If you do what He asks you to do, He will keep you from the diseases of the Egyptians. God would keep them from much of what troubled Egypt. Would they worship God with their lives? Would they honor Him with their obedience? If they did, God would give them happy lives. God gives you the joy of salvation. Just as the Israelites were saved by the sweet water at Marah, you are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. That is a reason for joy. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. That promise is as true for us today as it was for the Israelites. Praise God with joyful praise. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for Gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. Post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. For more information, please visit gracelink.net. Isn't it wonderful that we have such a caring and loving forever friend in Jesus? I can hardly wait to learn more about him. Oh, boys and girls. Now it's time to learn about God's second book, Nature. Let's take a look. Hi again, everyone. I want to talk to you today about uh, birds of prey. Now, that includes quite a number of birds, but I've got a few examples here that we want to compare and contrast. Um, this is a stuffed great horned owl that we have at the Nature Center. Um, owls are unique in several ways. The main thing is that their eyes are directed ahead. Both of them are looking forward. Most birds have their eyes on the side of the head, looking on each side, but owls are quite different. Uh, in, a diff in, a, in addition, owls also have feathered feet and legs. Keeps them warm in the winter, I guess. Um, and their, uh, their main sense that they use for hunting at night is a sense of hearing. And their ears are not these things, this is a great horned owl. That's just decoration. It's kind of useless. Uh, but they're hearing, their ears are right on the side of the head. And these facial discs that you see here act like parabolic microphones and funnel the sound right into the back of the ear so they can hear very, very well and find their food that way. Uh, now that's different from another common bird of prey. This is a hawk. This is a Swainson's hawk. And you can see that, in fact, they've got eyes, one on each side of the head. Um, and their legs and feet do not have feathers. So quite a difference between them, although they both are hunting for small mammals and birds. These guys hunt in the day using their vision. The owls hunt at night using sound. So now here's the one I really want to show you. This one's mounted in a flying position. This is an I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want to ask you the question. Is it an owl or is it a hawk? Now notice, eyes looking straight forward. A bit of a facial disc. But, no feathers on their feet. In fact, they've got very long legs. And these legs can bend in both directions. So, is it a hawk or is it an owl? I'll give you three seconds to decide. It's neither. This is a northern harrier. Um, it's more like a hawk than an owl, probably, but it does use the sense of sound and the sense of vision for its hunting. 
And so it's a unique bird. It's, it, it's a harrier. It's not a hawk and it's not an owl. Now that reminds me of something that's really, really important for us, especially this time. God has given us all a unique set of talents that makes us all different. We know that. We're all the same in that we're sons and daughters of God. But he's given us different tools to use at different times. And some of us have skills that we've used in the past that have been great. Some of us, he's given skills that we're yet to use in the future. But for some, he's given skills that are perfect for this time with COVID-19. Uh, one example I can think of is all you techie guys that are helping us survive, even though we're sheltered at home or social distance. So it's really neat to see how God has given each of us different talents to use at different times for such a time as this, quoting something from the Bible. And so I just want to encourage us all to, to remember the talents that God has given us, maybe cultivate some of those talents, and use them for him in his service. See you later. Uh-oh. Can you believe our time is over for today? How can that be? We just got started. But Mr. Clock says it's time to go. So let's have our closing prayer and our closing song, shall we? Okay, let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and tell Jesus how much we loved spending time with him this morning. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing us here. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the mission story. Thank you for allowing us to spend time with you. Please be with us on this Sabbath day. Help us to remember you. Help us to remember what we learned and to apply it for the rest of the week and the rest of our lives. Help us to keep your word in our heart. And we want you to know that we love you and look forward to learning more about you every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope that you learned more about our forever friend Jesus and Savior through this program. I sure did. Okay, here comes our goodbye song. Get your singing voices ready. I hope you can tune in next week. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. We have now come to the end of our program and we'll sing our closing song, Our Time Together Is Over. <laughs>